Hey, it's nine o'clock. I'll go ahead and call this special meeting to order. The purpose of the special meeting is to consider an agreement with PEC for the phase two improvements at their water treatment plant. So uh, with that, we will consider the meeting in session. Um, in our packet, we received the revised proposal uh, from October 9th to now, the <coughs> scope of the work had had changed. Uh, I asked Kelly to send us the diagrams that reflect the additional items, the fencing and uh, the work in the in the building. Um, the uh, fee projection reflects the additional items. Um, my thought was we kind of discussed in detail the original uh, work under phase two. So maybe kind of recap that and then before we look at the contract then we'll, we'll discuss uh, some of the fencing and the building additions. Then we'll go back to discuss uh, the agreement that was presented. So, uh, let's see. I, I apologize for not, my mind's been going all sorts of directions. And this morning is, I mean, to start up, the dog, the pup, gets my remote to the TV and starts chewing on it. So it was a good day, you know. <laughs> but, um, Let's see, find the easiest way. Is, is this the best summary to look, I think so. look at? Okay. Yeah, so in your packet there is a memo. It's just a one sheet memo, looks like this. It's got a couple tables in it. So we'll go through this just to kind of recap um, where we started and what has been done so far. And then um, as mayor said, we can go through the contract specifically and I can address any questions with that. So the original project was um, started in 2017 and the original project was to first prepare a design memo that kind of outlined what the um, initial projects were needing to be to address things that were going on at the facility. Um, and we put that together uh, in 2017. And this first table in here indicates all the things that we had discussed in that memo as things that needed to be addressed at the water plant. So the first thing were the electrical system upgrades. That was new electrical system, a generator, um, new electrical feeds and such to address the aging electrical infrastructure at the plant. And Sarah, with that project, we had some change orders other than unseen site conditions for digging, but we added LED lighting throughout the treatment Correct. plant? Yes, there was a change order that was processed for that, uh -huh, for new lighting. Okay, so mm -hmm. both it's improved the visibility within the plant, but also we should have a return on cost savings Correct. for operating Correct. the lighting, because those areas are lit 24-7, aren't they, generally? Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Um, the other items that were included in the original design memorandum that have not been completed yet uh, were the primary settling basin repairs. Um, we, during our initial um, inspection phase, when we developed the design memo, we drained the um, settling basin and the clarifier to take a look at what needed to be done there. So there were repairs that were recommended for the settling basin and then also the clarifier equipment as well. We also included in the original design memo um, doing some renovation work on the filter building to make better use of that space and add some spaces, locker room and some um, you know, kind of break room areas that are not there currently. And then also security fencing was one of the other items that was included in the original, um, original design memo. So those are the items that are laid out in that first table. Um, like I said, of those, the electrical system upgrades is what was completed as part of phase one. So the remainder of the items that we were discussed in the design memo have not been done and are included in the phase two contract. And I think when we, we looked at the original contract in October, the security fencing and the building renovations weren't included in that proposal. Correct. Either. Yes. So, so we're adding 
the bottom two items in the first table plus the uh, items below? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then um, after we had, so between the time that um, all this work was done and before we finished um, phase one, uh, the city got a letter from KDHE about a couple things that needed to be addressed. And so those first two items on the second table, the anti-degradation study and the filter backwash um, memo, those are things that came in response to a letter from KDHE. Okay. So the anti-degradation study has to do with permitting the residual lagoons. Um, and then the backwash review is there's a there's a line that um, is connected back through the plant with the backwash so it's connected mm -hmm. that it shouldn't be it's connected into the stormwater system if I remember correctly okay. and so that needs to be addressed so those first two items are a requirement by KDHE okay. the anti degradation study mm -hmm. deals with the lagoons Correct. which are located they're just a little let me get my directions wrong in the flood plain down below <clears throat> to the east well there's yeah so the issue there is that the city doesn't actually have a permit to discharge those lagoons to the river and that was probably okay. just an oversight on everybody's part and in kdhe's quite some time ago we've actually been going through this exact same thing with other communities where it's just kind of come to light that they don't actually have a formal permit um, so it's not that we expect an issue with that process but it is a formal process that needs to take place with kdhe so that there is actually a discharge permit associated with them okay mm -hmm. so it's not reconstruction or no. anything of the lagoons. It's yeah. just studying Correct. to clarify what's in the lagoon so that we can get a permit to discharge it to Correct. the river. Right. Just yes. a procedural. It's just a procedural okay. thing to be able to pretty much a paperwork thing through KDHE. Well, then this is now, since we're at the lagoon, jumping into your contract, it said that there was going to be some geotech some borings done in the lagoon near the lagoon and that was a require that's a requirement of kdhe for that process and it said that there would be no soil sampling or testing of the Correct. material what's the purpose sure. of the drilling so the purpose of the drilling is that kdhe basically just wants to see what the soil is like near the lagoons they want to see what that bore log looks like um, so that they know that there aren't any issues with where those lagoons are constructed and the soil compatibility. And so we don't actually do any sampling to determine any sort of strength tests or anything like that because that's not what's required. The only thing that KDT requires is actually okay. seeing the bore log to look at the soil conditions. So you're trying to find out whether it's a, a silty mix, a clay, a gravel, mm -hmm. a sand. Correct. To do, which would be indication of permeability Correct. from the lagoon direct to groundwater Correct. instead of going through the process of the lagoon. Right. And so, again, it's just part of the process of, mm -hmm. of um, what we have to do to, to go through that anti-degradation study with KDG. Okay. The other thing they'll require um, is that they'll have to do some sampling of the discharge, and they'll only have, I think, it's not very many constituents, but there are some things that they um, request having sampling reports for on the discharge. So basically what the anti-degradation study is doing is basically saying we're not impacting the river. You right. know, we're not putting anything worse into the river than what's already there or, you know, above mm -hmm. um, limits of whatever constituents. So um, there'll be some sampling, but that's pretty minor. Initial sampling or ongoing sampling? It's just initial for the study itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you're just trying to prove that what we're doing is okay. Correct. Up to this point. And the permit, there may be ongoing sampling. I'm sure there will be if it's a discharging. Yeah. There There'll will be sampling requirements. Mm -hmm. And I think typically, I don't know if they're all the same, but I think typically it's maybe a couple times a year kind of deal. Yeah. So it's not like mm -hmm. a every week kind of thing or anything like that. Is the sampling where you just go down and, like, turn the faucet on, draw some water, and go up and test it, or is it equipment that's required to be installed on the discharge it'll, it'll line? It probably be just a, I, I don't know, but I would think a, like a grab just sample, a grab sample. Sent to the lab, and they'll test it and send results to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just basically taking a jar essentially taking and taking jar. it and dumping it into the sampling bottles is all there at the outfall okay. at the discharge point well with them located there in the flooding of the river do these lagoons get flooded uh, are they I high enough in the, 
Well, they they would have in 07. They did in the water in 07. <clears throat> so. Is that going to be a an, an issue with KDHA? I, I don't foresee it being an issue. Most generally, those type of things are always in a floodplain, it seems like. Just okay. like a wastewater treatment plant and everything else, they seem to be in a real low point. So. And I would say the letter that you got from KDHE requiring the permitting and stuff didn't mention anything about having to relocate. It was just the permit piece of it. So we don't I didn't know if we'll, KDHE was opening a door. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. think so. Okay. I know Cockerville has gone through this, and, and their stuff's in a floodplain, mm -hmm. so it's been a, not an issue. This so the, this water that goes into the lagoon comes from the washout of the basins or the filters? It's the sludge off the uh, clarifier. The clarifier? Yeah, the sludge off the clarifier is what it is. And that's the outside basin yeah, that's the got the center? The center. The center, the center. Yeah. okay. I'm trying to it's, it's get mostly, familiar with your terms. It's too. mostly the dirt out of the river. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're, yeah, you're wanting to put the dirt back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. And then so, the the filter backwash review that's required by KDHE. Now that's the filter is in the building. Right. And it's where you backwash to clean the filters. Right. They want that they're, they're concerned about chlorine there. Uh, that's what they're concerned about <coughs> chlorine going into the river. So that um, task, as far as our contract is concerned, is just a review of what the situation is and what the options are, and then getting KDHE buy off on that. So then if they're required to actually do some sort of design and do all of that, that would be in addition to what we've got here, because we need to figure out what KDHE is going to require first. So this just involves taking a look at what the situation is, what the options are, and then going through the process with KDHE to determine what needs to be done. Okay. So it, generally, they want us to to tell them what is going into the river from that backwash system mm -hmm. and then it'll determine whether it's acceptable or not because increase chlorine can be at a level that it becomes detrimental to river life fish Correct. and mm -hmm. organic or plant life mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to make sure Correct. Okay. Correct. So then the other items that are listed in the second table and that have been added to the contract were things that um, came about through discussions with city staff. So the first one is the clarifier sludge on line replacement. Um, that line basically from uh, clarifier to the manhole. There's a manhole in between and from that point um, there's the lines in fairly bad shape. We had looked at doing mm -hmm. that and adding that into the design contract for phase one but it was delayed till phase two right. so that is added in here. Um, the high service pump station down by the river uh, wanted to look at some options for protecting that a little bit from the floodplain. Um, looking at maybe some different types of doors or you know kind of a retaining wall something like that so looking at some options and developing a, a design for protection of that building. Um, the filter building just putting new coating into the, the flooring in the filter building and then um, constructing a new building um, outside of the filter building to move the chlorine um, containers and the chlorine feed equipment into that into that building. So those are the things that have been that were not included in the original design memo but have been added since then. Okay. Okay. And actually the contract that we considered in October had everything except the filter building renovations and the security fencing. It didn't, you're correct. It did not have yeah. those two, and it also didn't have the, the, rehab of the, clarif the rehab of the clarifier was not included in those. So if you look at the top table there, the design member and project status, those last three, the clarifier repairs, the filter building renovations, and security fencing were not in the October contract. Those have been added since then based on our discussions at that meeting and then um, discussions with staff since then. Yeah. So, Clarifier, okay. Repair, yeah. Yeah, there's some repairs that need to take place to the mechanisms um, into the basin and then the drive unit itself. So, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, I think that brings us up to date. The okay. things that I guess I, I thought we need to talk more about with what was added from our original sure. review. Did you get a copy of the original contract you considered in October? Yes, I did. Okay. So uh, you guys feel free to enter in with any questions or anything. You know. Thank you. So the, the clarifier repairs, mm -hmm. um, there's been some deterioration or is this a upgrade of the system? So as part of the design memo that we did in 2017, we had the manufacturer of the equipment come out and do an inspection um, of the equipment mm -hmm. and give us kind of a report of things that they thought needed to be fixed or repaired um, or replaced as far as the drive equipment is the big replacement and the other is really just some repairs, um, blasting and coating the equipment, um, that kind of thing. And so the what's included in that task item in our contract is basically everything that they had included in their recommendations to fix. And um, so like I said, I know that that was replacement of the drive unit. Um, there's some metal loss in a few places that needs to be repaired. So basically blasting everything, making the repairs to the metal um, and then going ahead and recoding all of the equipment pieces, all the metal equipment pieces um, in the clarifier. Okay. So, again, just kind of be redundant, but you've got the basins that hold the water, clarifiers in the middle. Right. Kelly, do you have that aerial you had a yes. minute ago? Now, part of our, our project, primary settling basin repairs. Thank you. So the clarifier there you go. So the is clarif a circle. Correct, right. yes. So yeah. the settling basin itself is really that whole piece, but primarily to, on the other side of that basin, and then the clarifier is the round equipment in the, in the middle. Okay, what do you call the, the basins to the left? Of That's this primary settling basin to, to the, the left, left of the clarifier. Press the center when there's a oh, thank you. Okay. So this piece over here, you can see there's, there's a baffle wall that yeah. is constructed here. So this is the primary settling basin through here, mm -hmm. and then this is the clarifier itself. So in the primary settling basin, we were talking about some concrete repairs. Um, city noticed kind of some leakage coming through the walls and mm -hmm. some other things. So when we drained that whole thing and we got in there and inspected it, we actually did some um, concrete course right. too to make sure of what was there. Um, and so we've recommended some repairs just to get that kind of sealed up. Mm -hmm. And then in the clarifier itself, um, the drive mm -hmm. mechanism is in the center mm -hmm. on the top of the catwalk or top of the walkway there. And so the drive mechanism needs to be replaced and then also add some new controls, the ability to, mm -hmm. to control that better on that drive mechanism. And then you look at all the metal you know, compartments, some you can see and some you can't, metal um, elements right. here. But basically there's just primarily just some repair work. All in all, it really was, the metal was in pretty darn good shape. Um, yeah. so, but there are some areas that need to be repaired to make sure it, you know, continues to work for you. Primarily where the lime goes in. Correct. Primarily where the lime goes in, there's some loss of metal and some corrosion. Um, and there were a few of the supports, if I remember right, out on the, um, kind of on the spokes that you can kind of see that, that needed mm -hmm. to be replaced or repaired. Um, but overall, it's in pretty good shape. So what you're, you're saying, if we're going to replace or do repairs on the basin, let's do, do that it all whole. at once system all at once Correct. going to the clarifier since we know there's issues mm -hmm. let's get it done all at once yes what are the uh what's i'll call it a basin that's south of the settlement basin what's it called these basins that, here yeah. east basin and the west basin so our, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense so is what the project there? including repairs on those two no. also do those need repaired? Are they, do we have issues with those? We have not drained those to inspect them. So, I mean, you can kind of see some <laughs> concrete issues when you're, you know, right on the edge there, but uh, it's sure. not something that we have looked at previously. We down in October of every year and clean them and do an inspection ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're in pretty good shape. Yeah. More, more than anything, um, there's a sidewalk that goes through the middle of those mm -hmm. you know, that could be removed replaced probably needs to be replaced it's spalding and, and falling apart mm -hmm. and that, that's 
about the only thing in there, and maybe some of the uh, railing along that mm -hmm. sidewalk mm -hmm. is starting to deteriorate. But other than that, those are in uh, pretty good shape. Those have a slow mm -hmm. mix, what they call paddle, like, remain like paddle wheels that'll. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've done, we do repairs to those all the time. They're just contact basins, mostly. Where you were those added for additional capacity then? No. That, they were. That, are they the same age as the clarifier and the other yes. basin as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the well, accelerated the, aging the, of the clarifying the basin is because of the uh, the lime. The, the uh, clarifier was added in the '60s. The basins were actually construction in. 1916? 13. Original. 13. Oh, 1913. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so both, both, <laughs> both sets of basins, the, the east the and the west, were both built at the same time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Good engineering. Well, I was wondering, you know, we got the revolving loan, and we're looking at, at addressing repairs. And we've got the settle, primary settling basin needing repairs. What's our schedule to know, or do we need repairs here? And, and you're identifying sidewalk, and you're identifying railing that needs to be repaired. You, you know, it, if we're going in repair mode, and we got a grant to do repairs, then systematically. We should be looking Wait, I mean, at that too. The, I, I, I understand what you're no, saying. Not, like, uh, it may not be a bad idea to do a, a quarter of those and see what the condition of them is and, and look at a coating or something on those too. No, I think that with the same age, it, there's possibility if you don't see increased damage when they're drained, that probably the the construction is same and it's it's stable. Uh, I don't know what the cost of a core. I wouldn't want to do a. Sometimes, you know, as architects and engineers, we can make a lot of money on studies and not prove much when we're done. No, we had a um, but, a subcontractor. We subcontracted yeah. that work out when we did that in the. Um, so we had our structural engineer here while they were doing it, but uh, we had a sub that did that work for us. You know, if we're looking at we're talking about a coating is adequate then you know if we are not blowing our budget beyond where we can feasibly handle it would be logical i would think to just look i don't know how do you commissioners feel uh, it, it my initial impression is that uh, apparently our preventive maintenance that we're doing uh, annually uh, is uh, is adequate to uh, maintain those the basins without the clarifier uh, but if there is a, an opportunity while certain contractors are on site to uh, to do maybe some unusual type of preventive maintenance then maybe we need to take a look at those opportunities Otherwise, it seems that you're draining it and cleaning it uh, and maintaining it on an annual basis is uh, is taking good care of things. And mostly the, the leakage would be from either cracks through the concrete that appear with shrinkage of the concrete or earth movement and the pressure of the water. What might not be an open crack when it's empty, when the water has weight, that can open a joint mm -hmm. and cause leakage when it's filled. Saw that on a swimming pool once. It, it, with a water weight, it just pulled the expansion and the control joints open enough. So, uh, but. Well, if that's something you are interested in, then I can certainly get um, a quote for the sub that would do that, you know, actual core to, to verify what those basins are and, you know, what all's in there, just like we did on the settling basin. Yeah. And then as far as our design fee, it wouldn't, it'd be minimal to add that into yeah. this, this contract. So it'd be that plus the sub work. But. So with setup of a contractor, 
the uh, on-site mobilization, it would be more efficient for us all at one time. And definitely with, when you identify the, the condition of the sidewalk and the railings to address, address those at this time. Um, so do you want me to go ahead and go through the other items that we added are there any other any questions on kind of what we have done to date or kind of what things are like it like uh, mayor said we talked through most of this um, in October but we do have a couple mm -hmm. things that were added so I'll just yeah. go ahead and go through those if uh, that's okay how about jump to the security fencing sure uh, so um, one of the things that was included in the original design memo is we looked at some options for security fencing and um, we actually um, our landscape architect and I went to the park board uh, as during that process and kind of showed these to them and we had a good discussion about options and those kind of things so um, through that uh, basically the discussion was that um, like a wrought iron fence or like a black chain link would be probably one of the two um, best options and most economical um, to, to fence in um, the actual water plant itself and so the contract that you have before you includes doing one of those two options um, it's either the um, the broad iron or the black chain link fence we looked at some other options that we had presented they had concrete columns and some other stuff or a solid concrete type wall and yeah. um, those were kind of obviously much more expensive and um, then two didn't see necessarily nobody you know the benefit there's an aesthetic appeal to it certainly but it um, as far as security mm -hmm. benefit either of these will be just fine so the contract is based on doing one of those two options can, can you go back to the aerial Kelly okay. there wasn't a an indication of where you planned the location of the fence how far so basically out. it's the perimeter of the water plant so you've got access gates through here right now over in this area and then there's obviously access this direction so we would be looking at fencing basically from the buildings all the way around the basins and we would come all the way back around um, on the site here back to the to enclose this area as well because the new chlorine building would be on this side so we basically be going from building around up here to the building um, and I did specifically put in here that that does not include any fencing down like at the high service pump station or intake or anything like that it's just the main plant treatment plant area up on the top um, above the river so Yeah, of course, the wrought iron fencing is going to be more expensive than the chain link. It is fencing. It is, but it's um, it's not. I mean, obviously, the solid concrete wall is screen wall is a whole different story. Yeah. Um, the chain link and the wrought iron are much closer together than those two are. <laughs> well, with the but. a majority of the or a large portion of the fence off of East Oak Street along the edge of. The, the the steep hill and then even coming along the north side you know the aesthetic quality of going with a wrought iron fence definitely in that area it's not justified sure. but then is uh, aesthetic for the additional expense for the wrought iron when you look at the section along the oval you know it, I don't know if we would benefit. We can always use the money in maintaining and improvements on the facility more than the fence will keep people out, whether it be chain link, eight Correct. foot high. Right, either one will serve iron, the purpose. Eight foot high. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have black chain link around the swimming pool that our thought was keep with that. Around the water plant would be perfectly acceptable, I would thought. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the picture of the wrought iron fence looks nice, but 
the cost and there is a difference yeah <laughs> definitely we don't need it on the back side but is the visual aesthetics going to add that much to it and the, the thing with the chain link you will be keeping small dogs <laughs> and cats out of there kids yeah. kids yeah yeah, yeah. and it, when our kids lived in the neighborhood one of their dogs got out and I don't know how long it was in the basin before you guys found it and it, it survived but it was a small dog that wandered in without and it could still fit through the uh, wrought iron fence but you know like you mentioned the black chain link at the swimming pool mm -hmm. we would be bringing continuity it wouldn't be so bad and it, it is attractive there and I, I'm just mm -hmm. saying you know if, if we can make a decision on the fencing then let's go forward and get it done uh, sure. alternate back and forth but I don't know how the other commissioners feel my question well, what was what was the difference in cost between the rod iron and the probably quite a bit it was so substantial it'd be, it'd be I a don't, substantial amount of savings going with the black chain yes link. there is okay. I don't have it in front of me I can pull it up no, it's on okay. my computer That's but okay. there, it, there is a, a significant amount. difference yeah okay yeah well yeah in addition to the cost of initial installation maintenance of a chain link fence down the road is also going to be less mm -hmm. expensive because you, yep. you can just get more mesh and uh, more yep. and, and replace it Easier any replace, damaged yeah, portion that's correct. So, that and uh, I'm a big fan of consistency so if there is yeah. already this type of structure within line of sight of the water treatment plant it would be uh, perfectly applicable to use this type of structure at the water plant as well yep. okay. okay all right so yep. black chain sounds link. good um, the yeah. Indeed. other the only other item that is different from what we talked about in October, we've already kind of talked about the re rehab of the clarifier. So the only other one is the uh, modifications to the filter building. Mm -hmm. So during the um, development of the design memo back in 2017, um, we had an architect put together some different options. Now these are not exactly what we're going to be ending up with with this contract. So I want to explain um, what we're kind of looking at. So the basic difference between the two options that the architect came up with was kind of the configuration of the restrooms. Mm -hmm. um, option one is a common restroom locker room area and the um, option two had kind of separate men's and women's facilities and then separate, um, you know, technically a whole separate locker room area. So what this contract is based on, and you will notice as well, with both of these options, there's a building addition. We are not doing the building addition. This contract is strictly working within the existing space. Okay. So it will be a layout will end up being slightly different than what's up here, but just to give you a perspective. So what this contract is based on is the option one, um, which is on the left side of the, of the page, mm -hmm. um, that kind of reconfigures the restroom and locker room area a little bit. Um, we will not be doing, if you notice in the front, um, the whole front is would be brand new on the options here. We're not doing that. We will continue to come in the stairs um, directly from the south, like we, you know, is, is currently. But the chlorine room, um, which is the room just to the north of the lab, all that equipment will be coming out of there and being put into the new chlorine feed building. So th that space will be reconfigured That's a as part of the long narrow building. Yeah. Well, we talked about moving that out with the with the chlorine building and then feeding it back in. We'll still use it. Yeah, we'll have all the equipment. That's but. where we pull the vacuum in to get the chlorine. So the valves are all, you know, the chlorine valves are there. Right. We were looking at relocating everything with the chlorine um, containers and the feed and everything into one yeah, building. Everything from the dock out there is what you, is that what you mean? Well, we had talked no, about, no. okay, <clears throat> maybe I'll let you talk. <laughs> talking about looking at the reconfigure and moving this stuff out of here and utilizing this space can we put this within somewhere in 
So what we had looked at based on the no, talking with Terry was taking the chlorine, the actual chlorine, you know, you got the big ton cylinders that set out on the dock, mm -hmm. putting that and the feed equipment all in one structure. Mm -hmm. So then that allows you to have all of that in. So we'll, you know, we'll be pulling, you know, you'll be pulling that vacuum. So we'll have, you know. Um, so we've got a sort of chlorox in that room too. Mm -hmm. We re can re we can reconfigure that as well. But, um, I mean, we can either utilize that chlorine room space for part of the remodel area or, you know, we don't have to. That was what Terry and I had talked about doing, so. But either way, the filter building modifications is gonna be working within the existing footprint um, of the building to kind of reconfigure okay. the spaces a little bit. Well, that was kind of, after looking at the plan and the add-on for such little space and then with the improvements in the uh, treatment facility it seemed like when we're looking at needing an office or some of the small spaces that in addition just increase the cost the addition Beyond. would increase the cost quite a bit, yeah. which is why we're basing it yeah. on utilizing, re reconfiguring the existing space. Yeah. And then when I looked at your, your contract, you said that uh, there was a statement about existing HVAC. Mm -hmm. If it was determined it wasn't adequate, and it seemed like, well, if you're adding on square footage, it's probably not adequate. But we're not adding square but footage. But now that's so. how you're saying right. that you work within that building, the HVAC should handle the square footage that's there without. Correct, and that's our assumption as well. Of course, if we get into it and find, okay, this isn't really gonna work, or there's issues with the HVAC system that need to be repaired or something to that effect, then we would have to look at that as additional design work. But at this point in time, um, we're assuming again, like you said, since we're not adding square footage, that so we can yeah. reconfigure what's there. We're, we're looking at option one right now in front of us. Without the issue. Without the addition. Without the so if you notice the across addition. the front, so right now the stairs where that where it shows that entryway, the stairs actually come from the south and go yes. into that okay. area. Okay, so the, the entry and the office are part of a new addition that would not be part of the Correct. Uh, that the is work. not part of this, this contract right now. We're looking at uh -huh. utilizing the existing space within the existing footprint of the building. So Sweet. there's a, in this particular example, there's a chlorine room indicated you were just speaking that you would reutilize or re reconfigure that for some other usage be because you're not adding on. So, is, is that right? Yeah, so what Terry and I had talked but, about was utilizing that space, so basically being mm -hmm. able to take down that wall and um, utilize right. that space as part of the renovated area there in the front by but, moving the, the feed equipment that's in there out to the new building. Right. 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 So I'm getting up to speed here, and if this is not the appropriate time to talk about this since we're going to be talking about it later, that's okay I can uh, I just would like to review at some point in time in our conversation this morning the uh, the the addition of the building mm -hmm. and, and the the utility that will be derived from that and uh, so it's whenever we get around to that part of the conversation we were just having about this option is dependent upon the construction of new space. Yes. Of a new chlorine building. Yeah. Correct. A new chlorine building. Yeah. yeah. So as well, as we get around to that, if maybe this is the time to talk about it. If it is, I'm I'm ready. But uh, um, if, I think you haven't been aware the need for the. You might explain why we're looking at uh, the new chlorine building. building. Was it there some issues with safety, the chlorine it, it's gas? It's a safety and issue. Um, mm -hmm. The chlorine ton cylinders, of course, those are pressurized ton cylinders, are mm -hmm. on a dock, an open dock. And if you were to have a rupture of one of those tanks, it would impact this community in a very large way. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to put numbers out there and, and scare people but it would be a huge impact right and so. uh, if we can put them in a contained building 
that's designed for that, and if you have that, that God forbid, have that happen, it would be contained in that building. So, so safety is the, the driving force behind building the, the building. Yes. But you said that was designed for this type of leak. Um, so is it designed for like an explosive decompression of one of the cylinders? Is the, would it, so would it be able to withstand an explosion of that type? Is that the type of building we're building? So the structure itself would just be, we're, we're just looking at like a precast concrete type building for that, you know, the building. What the safety feature is, is that's called a, it's basically a containment around those, um, you know, around the ton cylinders so that if there is a leak, it contains it within that so it doesn't get outside the building. So the building doesn't it's actually not the building contain itself. it. It's the building the it contains the mechanism Correct. that contains it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was uh, struggling with because uh, if you had a building full of chlorine, you'd still have a problem. Correct. So the, the mechanisms are designed to contain it within the system. And the dock itself right now is not configured to be able to put those on you know to be able to put those on the existing dock so a new structure is necessary to be able to do that and adding to the dock to, to uh, accommodate is uh, excessively costly there's other chemicals that are stored out there so we on right outside on just on the other side of the dock there are other chemical tanks for other mm -hmm. chemical feeds so if we were to try and expand the dock then we'd have to reconfigure all of that as well because they are adjacent to the dock on the, on the, uh, what on would the be side. the east side Correct. of the dock. So those so would have to be moved in order to expand the dock to accommodate the right. uh, mechanism that contains the uh, tank. Correct. So the chlorine tanks right now sit out here, and there are other t they're, they're on this side of the dock, mm -hmm. and then there are other chemical feed, you know, large tanks that sit over here. So relocating uh, those chemical feed tanks is more expensive uh, than building a new structure? I would say by the time we relocate all of that, add on to the dock and do everything we need to do there. I mean, to me, cost-wise, I can't tell you exactly. My guess is it would maybe, may end up being a similar cost, but it will be much easier from an operations standpoint and a construction standpoint to do a new building and move stuff over once it's ready rather than try and temporarily move this stuff over, build something here, add, you know, that kind of thing. So overall cost, if you look at it from a construction standpoint and operations standpoint, probably, I, I think it would be more if you were to try and expand the dock and have to re relocate all the other equipment. So what you could do with a new building is have the building constructed, the tank inside, the containment system established, and then just pipe from the building in and then do demolition of the the valves and everything in the existing filtration plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the flow of operation of the treatment facility would be there would be much less of an interruption. So near term, that uh, it could be cost effective for us to build an additional structure and uh, relocate. Uh, uh, chemicals into it and uh, and relocate the parking lot I think is part of that yeah cost the parking well. lot would be relocated oh, yeah. to the west side of the building. <clears throat> to the west side mm -hmm. which would not be inside the security fence would so we can would make be, it within the security fence typically we don't with parking uh, lots it's not necessary is, <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't think it wouldn't be needing to ha mm -hmm. be security other than maybe some lighting all Correct. right. I was I was concerned about that. It looked like um, you know we were adding perhaps uh, additional infrastructure and that therefore infrastructure maintenance costs because of uh, additional square footage under under roof there. But if it, uh, I guess it's the, the maintenance cost ongoing would increase slightly because you still have a building with a roof and. You, you do, know, but we would be looking at just from a overhead doors and those kinds of things that would be needing to be maintained as the mm -hmm. as they wear out uh, and uh, and need to be uh, refreshed and maintained. We would be looking at, um, like I said, our initial thought with that would just be a precast concrete building with a 
precast, you know, double T roof, you know, so it's all concrete. So the maintenance is really pretty minor. You'd have a, like an EPDM or some kind of roof, you know, on top of it. What kind? EPDM? It's a plastic. Rubber. <laughs> rubber EPDM's kind of material. Rubber. <clears throat> yeah, it's a rubber type material. TPO is a vinyl. Either way, but some sort yeah. of, you know, that on top of there. So you would have to replace that every, I don't know, those are typically 20, 30 year I think yeah. products, but unless you um, could put some slope on it and put a standing seam metal roof over it, we could do that. Then as we're well. looking at 50, 60, yeah, plus but years on it. From the building that itself, we were looking at concrete simply because it is a lot easier to maintain. Sure. I mean, there is very little maintenance, right. if anything, on the concrete building. So, being in a separate would, building that also that. gives you um, a safety, additional safety factor, not being in the facility where the where your people are. Because the whole container. idea behind this is safety, mm -hmm. to get that moved away. <clears throat> the cost to try and attach it, there's so much around it, around the existing building, that it makes it difficult to attach it. So it's cheaper to build it away in an open space and then run piping to the building than to, mm -hmm. to deal with the issues close to the building. And it will be, like you said, right next to just to the east of that dock, but it will be a separate, separate Close space. Close in between the generator and the building? Yeah, which is why we need to move the parking lot to the other side. Mm -hmm. The um, <clears throat> Ultimately, I'd like to see the numbers on that, but uh, sure. I'll accept at this point in time that it looks like it's going to be a lowest cost solution would be to build the uh, additional space and move those uh, chemicals and that containment uh, equipment out to that additional space well since we haven't seen actually a, a final site plan or a building plan uh, once a preliminary is established we could ask that it be presented to the commission for review with those please. numbers sure. if you yeah, like. absolutely please and what we'll do we can talk to um, you know contractor to kind of get an idea as far as what that to try and quantify the difference in construction and in constructability with having to move those things around in temporary pipe and all that kind of stuff versus you know doing a new structure so but yeah we can do that once like you said we get a, a, a you know preliminary layout of everything done in the first phase of our design work okay. thank you yeah. certainly on that HVAC system did we not replace a unit at the water plant here recently yes. the air conditioner. okay the air conditioner and air handler uh, that all went out this this past or this only last thing, summer only thing that's Original boiler, but I don't know how that boiler is. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's something as we're, since this is a maintenance revolving loan, and with the boiler, the age, uh, it's maintenance, and then looking at the efficiency rating, too. You know, hate to do all the work, and then in a year, the boiler go out. The, you know, I don't know if, if how well the boiler is maintained or anything like that. But well, it's, it's fairly well maintained. Uh, What's the age? Probably. I don't know the age on that boiler. I'd have to go look. Do you know? When it, was, it was installed when right after Gerald started, I believe. Because he, he can remember. I think Lee's heating and cooling had to install it. So that's 25 years? Yeah. yeah. But so with the state the, comes in and inspects it yeah. once a year anyway. With maintenance, they're pretty trouble free if they're maintained. It, it has been. Yeah. Okay. So you get, you get a long life out of that. Yeah. With it, but I don't know what the life of one of those is. Uh, Long. With, with maintenance, it's a <laughs> long time. It it controls. Control. Yeah. Okay. If they're drained down, cleaned, and. Yeah. So the parking lot will probably enter from Oak Street outside the. The service drive is going to come in. Well, well, we'll have to survey all that as part yeah. of the initial and make determinations of what makes the most sense. Um, and we'll have to talk through city about no. cuts into the curves and all that good stuff. And 
we had talked about Cornerstone doing the survey. Correct, and this is and based it's on them doing that it. whole area over. So to yeah, it's the all the south. So do you mind? I'm sorry, Kelly. Do you <coughs> mind pulling up that aerial again? And yes, we did contact Cornerstone, so they'll be the ones doing the survey work. Okay, so we will be surveying um, all the area around this around the building, so all right through here, because this will be where the new parking lot and the new structure. So we'll be surveying all of this. And then we also have a bit here that needs to get surveyed down through here for where the sludge line, the clarifier sludge line that we talked about replacing, we need to get survey through that area as well, back through here. So that includes all of that. I think when I was here in October, um, you asked me to get a cost to survey the whole site. And I think the difference, um, what's included in here for them to do, um, just the, the bit that we absolutely need um, is um, 6,000 total. And it was going to be around 12. It was about double that to do the whole site. So what's included in here now is just to do what we need for the project work. Yeah, I think the request for the identifying the size of the trees there were a lot of trees and we reduced that uh -huh. okay yeah we reduced that in the original in the cost so the the cost that's included in here includes going i can't remember i think it's like but so much your, larger on the trees does your survey go out to oak street yes and up to the yes the it goes street. from street to street so, mm -hmm. okay yeah mm -hmm. okay I have a question. Sure. This, I can see that the, the transformer bank there, and that's where the uh, initial, the, the original feed or the, the the last feed for the water plant was located down there in the floodplain. Right. So is that is that still in is that still in use or that's not in no. use anymore? No, it's up here now. So ev everything everything is run off the the pad mount that's set up set up high. Correct. Correct. That okay. Comes, that comes from the alley New pole. to mm -hmm. the west of Park Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Comes over. Okay, so that's just an, an abandoned uh, that, primary that. I don't know if they've taken that all out or not. I think, okay. I think they're working on taking all that out down in the floodplain. It's all gone. Okay, it's, it's all, all gone. gone. Okay, I just saw that there, and I wonder why is it still there. Everything's gone. Okay. Just because it's an old aerial. <laughs> okay. Let's start with very Oh, yeah, I'm but. sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. So that's all up here <laughs> in the up in the parking up lot the area parking now. Lot area. From February. Okay. Around that time. Yeah, I was brought right right yeah. before we started doing all this stuff. So. <laughs> so on the the pump building mm -hmm. <clears throat> to keep it from flooding, you're, you're looking at Down those here. three doors, or are you looking at a re retention berm or dike? So that what comes we're gonna. From it? Mm -hmm. So what we will evaluate are kind of what the options are, and then. Mm -hmm. Um, give a recommendation and then you know get a consensus on which way to go before we do any design work but our initial thoughts are either different types of doors that are meant to keep the flooding you know to keep the waters out or some sort of retaining wall are the two things our initial thoughts mm -hmm. but um, we'll come up with some options and then come back to the the city for approval before we start an actual design of an option so when you look at the doors you're gonna have to look at the structural mm -hmm. integrity of the walls right. the lateral Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all of that will play into costs and yeah. what option we end up going sure. with. Sure, because with them not waterproof, water goes inside and outside and it's pretty much stabilized the height. But when you keep water out, now you're creating a swimming pool wall, but reversed. Yeah, keep, this, keep these guys from having to put sandbags out every time. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, okay. The tanks outside are they the clear wells? Clarifiers. Clarifiers. Well, the oh, the down by the river. Yeah. Clear wells. Those are the clear okay. wells. Yeah. The two with the metal covered on. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. The other one is not in use. Yeah. It hasn't been thought about. Is yeah. that going to be removed as part of that because it's in really bad condition and it's falling well, apart? Well, we can we can discuss that. <laughs> well, I mean, it could fall on one of those other structures. Uh, do we want to look at? 
demoing that out and getting it out of there? Or? When we put together um, our cost estimates as we move forward with um, the design work on this, we can include a line item for demolition of that. We can get an idea of what that is just so you know the cost and then whether you include it in the final yeah. project or not, that's your decision. But um, but we can it, get an idea of a cost it's for it. To fall apart. Sure. Yeah, okay. Con condition is one thing if it's deteriorated beyond use and if it'll never be rehabbed mm -hmm. then it'll never be used. Then there's no need of waiting for something waiting for it to fall on the clear well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Good uh, that's a good point. I don't, I know thirty five years ago that the uh, director at that time tried to get me to demo it with the city of Clinton. Mm -hmm. No. I've seen some YouTube videos. <laughs> and, uh, they always come under failed or something. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I think any questions about the scope of the work or the portions of the project? No, I think we've we've moved forward on and identified um, uh, what we want a proposal on, especially the chlorine containment building and the costs associated with that. And we were pretty well in agreement that the black uh, chain link fence that was the the option to go for, being it's already in use in the park. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that. So how have our our changes that we talked affect the bottom line. I so the only <laughs> thing that we talked about um, that would affect the price included in this contract is looking at those um, the other contact basins. So I can get you, you know, what if we want to add that task, what that would look like? Because, like I said, we'd have to have the sub come out, and we want to do the cores like we did on the other basin, and right. then just a, a, you know, a, you know, an estimate of um, designing repairs. Um, for that so that's the only thing that would that we talked about that would change the contract itself. So demoing that the structure wouldn't add any additional design No costs. for design costs no it would strictly be just a you know as far as a plan sheet's concerned we just put a demolition sheet that's okay we can that's that's nothing um, but and we will just as part of our cost estimating as we're going through the initial cost estimates we'll just get a, an idea of an estimate from a contractor of what that would take and include that line item so there's no additional change to this to be able to do, to well, put that information there. Demo that before they put the blow down on you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, but no, that will not affect anything. And then um, the other thing we had talked about was getting kind of an idea of a cost comparison um, between building the new structure versus expanding the dock and having to move everything else and we'll just do that as part of our initial cost estimate meeting. Okay. So, no change to that. So the only thing that would change the contract is doing anything with the contact basins. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to come and, and present to the commission your final plans that won't affect your fee any no, so the fee that you've got here includes us coming to work through. Um, obviously, we've got several meetings. We've got an initial um, site visit for everybody to come back out. We've obviously have our electrical guys out here quite a bit, but um, uh, our other design folks, so an initial site visit to get them to come out and take a look at everything. Um, this includes, like I said, all the other work. Uh, we will have um, review sessions with staff and with the commission along the way. Um, and this also includes um, doing what's necessary for the funding aspect of it. We'll have to do um, an amendment to the additional um, preliminary injuring report that we submitted to KDHE because it only included what was done in phase one. Or there's some additional things that we want to add, so we'll need to just do an amendment to that report. And then all the funding aspects of everything that we need to do during construction and everything is included in this as well. Um, we do have, this goes through the design, KDG approval, bidding, and construction administration on our side of things. So the only thing that's not included in this contract um, at this point in time is any sort of on-site inspection during construction. That'll be something that we can talk about when we get the design all nailed down and kind of make a determination of um, what's necessary during the electrical work. Um, we just came down on our monthly progress meetings and took a look at everything. Um, just because of the nature of the work, we didn't really necessarily need to have somebody down here all the time. 
yeah. um, watching the contractor. This will be a little different um, just because of the nature of the work. And so that's something as we get through design that we can talk about um, what makes the most sense and then you guys can make a decision on what you want to do with the inspection piece. So that'll be separate later on. Uh, well, in the, in the contract exhibit A under task three geotech investigations, mm -hmm. uh, item A identifies uh, investigation scope shall include work for the chemical feed relocation <coughs> scope item only but then there was some borings at the lagoon also weren't there um yes let me take a look back at that item here real fast um, where is it? So there we go. um i noticed i think it was under mm -hmm. exclusions <coughs> Um, item 12 it says geotech work for existing residual lagoons shall be only a boring log no soil and analysis or recommendations will be yeah, developed so, so it indicates the cost that is included in here includes doing both of those borings one for the building and one for the um hmm. the lagoon so i will make yeah. that addition in the um okay. <coughs> in the lagoon piece, or in the anti-degradation study. Okay. Where did I? Okay. Yeah. Um. The, the, what was the original amount that, that we borrowed for this? Was it three million? I think it's three, three point one. 1 million okay mm -hmm. and how much uh, how much of that money has already been allocated and and uh, spent toward the completion of phase one it was a little over a million I think that's correct I don't have any for me I can pull it up if you want so we're probably looking we we have quite a balance of two million dollars approximately mm -hmm. pretty close to that yeah okay which that can be modified too um, I mean, they're always happy to loan us more money. Well, I was thinking less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> less is more, right? More well, or less. As, <coughs> as we start to get into this design, you'll notice that we're going to have cost estimates along the way. So we typically will do mm -hmm. kind of a 30%, 60%, 90% yeah. um, design <coughs> stages. And with that, we present cost estimates. And our contingency is pretty high at the beginning just because we haven't gotten into the details yet. And that gets refined as we go along. So we'll have a, a good idea before we get to the end of um, our design process if you know things need to be put in as add alternates, you know, or if you want to go ahead and extend the loan to cover, you know, hey, we've got this much left, let's go ahead and cover the loan. Um, if you do decide to extend the loan amount, it is an amendment um, to the loan. It's a paperwork thing with KDHE. It's not a lot of we don't have to go back and redo, you know, all of the the information. Um, it's usually just an amendment form to fill out. So. We get to that point and decide that the loan needs to be extended a little bit or the amount changed a little bit, we can do that for you too. And task eight, rehabilitation of clear wells and north settling basin. We hadn't talked about anything on the clear wells. Those were the two down below. Correct. We're just noting that we're not, we're, we're specifically excluding those things out of our scope. So that is listed in the exclusion, doing any sort of destructive testing or doing anything with those. Okay, because item A says determine options for inspection of interior clear wells. That is strictly just determining what the options are and giving you. So that's really just a memo saying here's <clears throat> ways that you can do that. You can use a diver. You can do this. You can do this. So it's just a, that's just a, a technical, you know, memo to tell you what some options are that does not include any cost to actually do any of that. Okay, yeah. and it says in B, you're going to contact inspection firms and obtain proposals mm -hmm. for the required inspection mm -hmm. work. Correct. So the actual inspection work is not included no. in this? No, it is not. So, okay. So that would give you enough information to determine if that's something you want to go ahead and do or not. Um, Uh, 
Okay, so the exterior, you're going to have a structural engineer look at the outside of the clear wells. Correct. We in are going to have contract. in the contract. We will have our structural engineer just take a look at it and note if there's any major deficiencies that they note. But as far as inspecting the inside, we will just be getting proposal costs for other people to do that work and giving those to okay. you. Okay. So the inside, what they would probably be finding if the outside doesn't show cracks or major deterioration as differential movement or something then interior will probably be a coating or some kind yeah, of preservative we're starting to see a little bit of water leakage, leakage coming through mm -hmm. the wall in some places not great amount just dampness on that mm -hmm. exterior that's bad so yeah. a, a good coating on the interior would probably be the okay yeah, because once water migrates into the wall, if there's any steel right. reinforcing in there, now you get rust bloom, right. which get it. breaks the concrete mm -hmm. fractures. So, okay. Yeah, so what this includes from our structural engineer, just a visual inspection. So if you notice any exclusions, we specifically exclude any sort of destructive testing. So we're not going to do cords or anything like that on those structures. We're no. just going to look at them visually and then give you options if you want to have somebody take a look on the inside. Yeah, you don't want, if water, if you're seeing moisture that you feel is coming through, it's now is the time to get it stopped, right? Uh, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, all these words, clarifier, clear well, so. Since I'm lacy left the room, i volunteer to dive the, the tanks and those back them. Yeah. Sweet, <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so on, on task nine, high service pump, station flood protection, your fee covers whether doors are installed or a rim dike is? Correct. Mm -hmm. And that also um, includes taking a look at flood level information, talking to, you know, figuring out if there's permitting that's required from Division of Water Resources or anybody else because yeah. we're close down by the river and all that stuff. So, yeah. and then developing a couple options and then putting together the plan sheets for whatever option we go with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guy gets pretty involved with in the floodplain of. Well, the floodplain is shown on there, <coughs> on that aerial actually. Mm -hmm. So it's the newest floodplain. Technically, it's not the floodplain. Uh, well, the line. <laughs> but it's it's what they yeah. sent us. Yeah, <laughs> I put it that way. According to the map, but yeah, yeah. right. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Okay, task 16, construction administration service, mm -hmm. attendance at up to 10 progress meetings is coordinated by the contractor. Mm -hmm. This, let's see. So you're saying the only thing not included here would be the extent of uh, on-site inspections. Inspection, correct. Yeah. So basically we would be doing all the same things that we did during phase one as far as processing pay applications, reviewing all the submittals, you know, addressing contractor questions, filling out all the things for KDHE. Um, and the 10 progress meetings is based on what we anticipate construction time to be. So that's a, you know, monthly meetings during construction. And then of course we will do as part of the, um, we'll, we'll do an initial, um, uh, pre-construction meeting. Of course we'll do that. And then the progress up to 10 progress meetings okay. during construction. And then we'll have a final, um, walk through of the project to develop the punch list and all of that. But we don't, correct. So the only thing that's not included in here during construction is, is actual inspection services, having one of our people down here all the time while the contractor's working. 
Yeah. It, okay. It seems like the fence, the actual building modifications, parking lot. That's not going to require extensive inspection, but I guess when you come into basin repairs, clarifier, the uh, the line replacement, those are a little different that you need to see as they go in. Um, I guess what I'm what I'm looking at. There's two ways a contract bids. Either the contractor states the number of days to complete the work or you specify the completion time. Yes, we do. Okay, if you specify the completion time, then I think we can get close to a fixed number. I don't want it to come in that we're, we're anticipating so many days completion and then when we sign the contract, completion time doubles and now the no. city comes back with an amendment no so inspection. when we when we put together this we will determine the number of contract days so the contract agreement okay. between the city and the contractor will have in it a date for substantial completion and then a date typically 30 days later for final so the substantial completion date is when everything is done right. to where the city can utilize the intended improvements and then the final completion that extra 30 days is those punch list items getting the last paperwork in you know that kind of stuff to finish out the contract we set those number of days um, in the contract and the contractor is aware of that at bid time what the number of days for completion are um, we base that on um, construction time equipment lead times those kinds of things um, but we set those number of days and then we put in liquidated damages clauses so that if they go over that um, then the city has the ability to assess them liquidated damages at a set amount per day past the contract time okay so if the contractor is, you know, something happens where like we have just really crappy weather for, you know, mm -hmm. weeks and weeks and weeks on end, okay, it's okay, you know, that's legitimate potentially mm -hmm. to add on contract days, but if they're just not doing their job and not getting people out there, that's the city's way to make them, you know, get back out there or they're going to pay, um, right. pay money to the city for the damages that you've incurred by not being able to use the, the work, so. So for the determination of on-site, inspection we'll do it with a first we'll do that with an amendment to your contract yeah so as we go through the design process we'll kind of have those discussions as we get closer to you know the end of our design process to make the determination of okay based on what work is going on out here what we what we think you know um, there are certain things you know that you know your staff can see and, and watch over but it really is if you want to have somebody truly watching the construction to make sure that things are being put in the way they're supposed to and being done per the plans it's really a full-time job and your staff has you know obviously a lot of other things to take care of and i don't think staff needs to be dealing with the contractor when muscles needed that their uh, their job is to run the plant and it's not to argue with the contractor why he's not following the drawings mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, as like I said, as we get through design, that'll be something that we'll talk about um, what some options are and, mm -hmm. and talk to you about that. So that would be an amendment yeah. to the contract at a later date. And part of the reason we do that, you know, with this mm -hmm. large of a project right. and different parts and pieces too, is just um, once we get farther into all that, we'll have a better idea of what we really think is, is necessary. And that should come, you know, in my, my opinion, is before the project goes to bid correct we would have yeah. that discussion before that time frame All right yes okay any other question commission okay so just i don't have any no i don't have any at this time okay so do you want me to send so. a revised contract with the work at the contact basins added in or do you want me to tell you what that is and you decide if you want to add it in or just want to make sure I'm providing you what you want um, for the next meeting um, yeah why don't you give us an idea of okay. the cost of the work okay. plus engineering costs for us to consider yeah. Is that agreeable? Yes. Fine with me. Yes. Okay. 
I will provide that then back to and um, Terry we, and Kelly. Yeah. Okay. And we can consider uh, accepting the agreement at our next commission meeting. Okay. That's next week. Will that give you enough time? Well, I can put this cost information together, um, I guess, and then if you're going to consider whether you want to add that to the contract okay. next week, and then if you do, if you yeah. don't, then the contract you have is fine. If you do, then I can provide a new contract for the for the next meeting okay. after that. That sounds good. Okay. Yep. Okay. Very good. We appreciate you coming out. Yes, Certainly. Thank you for being today and yep. your patience and explaining what we're we're talking about. I think there's a lot of a lot of things, you know, with the, the drawings that we have seen and you know I keep the the question I had with the building was why are we adding on and I, that was already resolved but okay commissioners any other questions I'm good I'm good too this was the only item on our agenda so I think we accomplished our task with that I will make a motion to adjourn second it all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. motion carried Thank Sarah, you. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you.